Hello and welcome in to the first edition of Pat Stratton's vlog slash video blog, whatever you want to call it, many different names out there. Figured I'd give this a try. Uh, I like putting stuff down on paper, but I like to uh, just talk it out as well. So I figured I'd try this for a semester. I'm ready for a couple weeks. I want to get some input, so if you guys uh, keep, could subscribe to this channel, maybe figure, give me some comments. Um, I'd certainly appreciate it because I want to know if this is really what I want to do more than anything rather than be on a piece of paper. But uh, just just let me know. I'd certainly like to, to hear your input. Uh, just give me a message or whatnot, and I will be glad to read it, and I appreciate everyone's input. But uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about myself. Like I said, I'm Pat Stroud, and I am a Seneca, Kansas native, which is about an hour and 40 minutes away from Lawrence, Kansas, the current city where I, which I reside in. Uh, currently, I'm home here in Seneca, Kansas, just because the fact that it is break. Uh, Kansas, certainly, uh, we have a break uh, for winter, uh, just like every college does, and every high school does, too. And I don't go back to the 21st, so i got plenty of time to sit here in my room, which is where I'm at right now, and uh, just chill. But a little bit about myself, uh, down in Lawrence, Kansas, I currently am majoring in journalism uh, at the University of Kansas. I currently work for a radio station called 90.7 KJHK FM in Lawrence, Kansas, student voice of the Kansas Jayhawks. I have a sports talk show there every Thursday from 6 to 7 called Five Nation. I host it with four of the guys, Kyle Larson, Jonas Norman, uh, Jason Scholl, and David Elliott. All of them do a great job to chip in. And it's been a fun first semester with them. And I can't wait to do a uh, second semester with them guys because it will be really fun. Uh, also at the radio station, I call Kansas men's basketball games. I call Kansas women's basketball games. I, I want to get into KU baseball this, this year. We'll see how that goes. I'm not a big baseball fan, but certainly I've been wanting to get into it. I need to follow it a little bit more. It's just, I, just so many games in one season, 162 uh, games, I believe, is, is just outrageous. And then uh, also I call KU football as well, which is uh, pretty fun to call. As far as other things, I currently am a part of a – internet slash podcasting gig called podcastsports.net. I advise you to check it out. I'm currently the voice of the Byron Springs High School Braves, which I host with Kyle Larson as well. We have a lot of different things. I'm, I'm personally in charge of running a blog on the website, which is uh, on, on the website, uh, obviously not on uh, paper, but certainly uh, <clears throat> it's very fun to do that. Call every single KU, check that every single Byron Springs. I'm still thinking about KU because I, I call KU's game this Wednesday at UMKC, so not at UMKC, at Allen Fieldhouse against UMKC. Man, I'm struggling already. But uh, Byron Springs, I called every single football game. Guys, see them go to the playoffs. It was very uh, fun with uh, Luke Hasman and the Braves. It was certainly very fun, a great season. And now we get to watch and call the women's and uh, men's basketball games at Byron Springs. And maybe a little baseball we haven't decided yet, but certainly it would be loads of fun to do that as well. More experience, I've previously worked at 103.9 KNCA over in Hiawatha, Kansas, 30 minutes away from where I live, and certainly been uh, fun to go there. I did uh, lots of things at the radio station. Uh, one of the more things that know is the 2010 two-way state volleyball action. I hosted Nemaha Valley Games, which is my alma mater, and uh, that was very fun to see the girls go down there and uh, place it. Not place at state, but they certainly were the top eight teams in, the, in, the, in the Kansas, so it was really nice to see that. But what I really want to talk about, going and dive into some stuff here, NFL playoffs, obviously it's a big topic right now. A lot of people are breaking it down, and that's what I want to do too. I, I was going to do Pro Bowl, but I figured I can save that for either next week or something like that. I, I, I like Pro Bowls. I like to talk about snubs a little bit, but I'll get to that later. But we're going to focus on NFL playoffs right now. I'm going to go and start on the AFC. I'll give my predictions slash breakdowns for every single game, who's going to the Super Bowl, all that good stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and start it off and describe all the teams in it. Right now, number one seed, New England Patriots, highest team in the NFL right now, sitting pretty at 14-2, and two, finish up the season. Uh, I certainly didn't think they would be 14-2 the way they start out the gate, but certainly Tom Brady is taking over the team and they had a great job. Number two seed, Pittsburgh Steelers. So they get a first round bye as well, along with the Patriots. They finished 12-4. and four. Big Ben set up the first four games, and the Steelers kept winning those ball games, which was very impressive. So Steelers are a very good team as well. Now for the matchups, the first game will be Saturday, January 8th. It will be the New York Jets, who are 11-5, number 6 seed, will travel to Indianapolis to face the Colts, number 3 seed, who will finish the season at 10-6. Colts end up winning the way 
into the playoffs. Certainly, it didn't matter when the Jags lost to the Houston Texans today, but Colts seemed to pick up the win. They end up getting a uh, late field goal in the ball game with time expiring to win the ball game, which was very exciting for the Colts. And Peyton Manning did a great job with that team. Now, time to break it down a little bit <clears throat> as far as winners goes. It, it's going to be very interesting because. You have Colts, whose defense has been really bad all throughout the year. They've been very depleted, very many injuries, injury plague. But yet their offense is one of the finest in the nation. Of course, you got Peyton Manning and, uh, and a newcomer at tight end ever since Dallas Clark. I, I'm a big fan of Jacob Tammy. Jacob Tammy has been really good for the Colts. And now that they get the running game back, they have Joseph Adai back into the ball game. He did a great job last week. And certainly Joseph Adai can make some noise. For the Jets, they end up resting all their starters today. Well, I won't say all their starters, but most of their starters. Um, Mark Sanchez, he only had one series, and um, Attorney Cromarty, LaDamian Tomlinson, Darrell Rivas, just players like that all were inactive and decided to get some rest uh, for today's ballgame, which was very nice to see. But it's going to be really interesting because the Jets come in with a very, very tough defense. Two of the best cornerbacks in the NFL right now, Attorney Cromarty and Darrell Rivas. A lot of talk about both of them. Key matchup is going to be the the <clears throat> Mark Sanchez and the way he can defeat this Colts team because Mark Sanchez is not really the best quarterback out there but he has been very consistent all throughout the year and I think that he can do some damage against the depleted Colts team and with that I'm going to have to choose the Jets I, I, I really think that Peyton Manning would leave, leave the team all the way plus it's in Indy Indy Indy's a really tough place to play in that dome they certainly can make some noise in this playoffs but Peyton Manning, I don't think he can get. I don't think he can get it done uh, with the two best corners and one of the tougher defenses in the league. So I'm gonna choose Jets. I know I'm crazy for picking against Peyton, but I'm not a big Peyton fan. And this season he's been struggling all throughout the season. I think the Jets will win. Time for the next matchup: the number five Baltimore Ravens, who sit at 12 and four, unlucky draw for the Kansas City Chiefs because they are a really deadly team. Chiefs sit at number four seed, 10 and six overall. And they will play that game at 1, 1 p.m. this Sunday, January 9th. And it's at Arrowhead, so it's going to be rocking. <laughs> I am an avid Chiefs fan, so it's definitely going to be a rocking place. I didn't get playoff tickets, but I know a lot of people who did. And it's going to be rocking there in uh, Kansas City. And as for Baltimore, Baltimore co coming in, it's a really interesting matchup because Baltimore has really been an interesting team. But to me, uh, their offense is either a hit or a miss. And... The offense is really good or it's really bad. It's either rolls or it rolls over. And it's certainly an interesting team to look out for. Um, they they are a good team, but they certainly need to look out for a lot of the things there. Baltimore Ravens, I think, will come in and get the win against Kansas City. I'm sorry, Chiefs fans, but I'm going to have to go with Baltimore. Baltimore, though, I think the offense gets a click in. I think Kansas City today against Oakland was a horrible game. But I think the Ravens, with that, will come in and they will – Cause Matt Castle to turn the ball over. Oakland's up there good defensively. They are a better defensive team than they have been in the past. But without Richard Seymour, they sacked the quarterback. And I, I think that Baltimore Ravens will get this done. Baltimore Ravens will take this win. Now, with that, Pittsburgh will be facing the highest remaining seed, which is definitely the New York Jets. So they'll be facing the New York Jets. New York Jets versus Pittsburgh Steelers are breaking down quickly. Pittsburgh, certainly a very high defensive team. One of the best defensive teams in the NFL, Ben Roethlisberger, been doing a great job. Wide receiver came out nowhere, Mike Wallace, certainly a great, doing a great job on the offense. And then Rashard Mendenhall has been doing a great job. Easy pick for me, Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers has been really hot defensively, and they got Troy Palomalu back. And I think Mark Sanchez will make some mistakes in Pittsburgh. It's at Pittsburgh, so I think they'll win. That leaves New England Patriots to face the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Baltimore Ravens, they played the New England Patriots early on. Problem is, they lost the New England Patriots, and they're going to lose to them again. New England, pa New England Patriot, Patriots, New England Patriots, although, will certainly pick up this W as well. I think they get it done. Patriots too hot. Tom Brady will just dominate the game, and I think Tom Brady and the Patriots will move on. That leaves the Pittsburgh Steelers and New England Patriots to face in the AFC Championship game, and it's, it's really hard to choose because defensive team and the offensive team, uh, the defense for Patriots have been hot. Special teams have been really hot for the Patriots. They've been doing a good job. But I'm going to have to go with the New England Patriots. They will get home field advantage, and I think it's what's going to do it. Patriots back in the Super Bowl. Uh, very interesting, but it's going to be a close one. I think Steelers will make it close. Now, it's going to be really hard to choose these next divisional rounds. I don't think I have very much time left on this session. I've only got five minutes, so I'll break it down real quick. <clears throat> Chicago Bears are the number two seed, 11-5. Atlanta Falcons, 13-3. They're the number one seed. 
best uh, NFC team out there. Uh, certainly a very interesting team. Not, not really my favorite team to win it all, but well, I'll tell you my picks a little bit later. Now, the first game I want to break down is the number five, New Orleans Saints, 11-5, facing to Seattle or, or St. Louis. Either way, New Orleans Saints going to go into the place. They're going to take care of business. Drew Brees has been doing a great job. He's been kind of slumping lately. He's been on my fantasy team, so he's certainly been struggling a little bit. My fantasy team was horrible, by the way. But Drew Brees will come in. He'll get it done. Marquise Poston uh, has been having a great season. The, the all wide receiver core. Defense is going to be the key for New Orleans Saints, and I think the Saints will get it done against Seattle or St. Louis. Next game, Green Bay Packers, number 16, 10 and 6, facing all the way to Philadelphia Eagles, another 10 and 16. That'll be an interesting game. I think the Packers certainly come in hot now they've got Rodgers back, but I'm going to go with Philly. Mike Vick for MVP. Um, Mike Vick certainly does a great job. LaShawn McCoy's been an offensive weapon. Jeremy Macklin. Deshaun Jackson, just so many different weapons on this Eagles offense. I think that the Packers will struggle. You know, the Packers do have some of the best linebackers in the game. My personal favorites, A.J. Hawk and Clay Matthews. Shout out to them because they've been having a great season. But Philly, I think, will win. And it's at Philly, so I think they'll pick up the win. Now, that leaves Atlanta Falcons to face the, I believe, New Orleans Saints. And that'll be an interesting game as well. New Orleans Saints travel all the way to Atlanta. This has certainly been two NFC South Divisional teams, and certainly very interesting. But I'm going to go with Atlanta Falcons. I'm, I'm going to have to take them. Drew Brees, this is Matt Ryan. Um, we know what happened the first time. Atlanta Falcons won. Second time, I believe Atlanta Falcons won. Check that for me. But certainly Atlanta Falcons doing a great job. And I think that uh, Matt Ryan will lead them. They're not really my favorite team. I don't think they're – they're not flashy. There's something about them that doesn't catch my eye, and I think that uh, – Certainly, they can make some noise, but they, they need to keep running, have a balance attack between Michael Turner, uh, Matt Ryan, Roddy White having a great season. Tony Gazzas one the best tight ends in the game. Offensive line's been doing a great job, and their defense has been really solid all throughout the year as well. So I'm choosing Atlanta in that one. And Chicago Bears will be facing Philadelphia. Man, I want to go with Jay Cutler, but Philadelphia Eagles. I think I'm going to have to choose them. They're traveling to Chicago, but I think they will get it done against Chicago Bears because I think this defense for the Eagles, they will cause Jay Cutler to, uh, to turn the ball over. And I think Jay Cutler showed that today when he was facing against the Packers. He overthrew a couple of them, and certainly they got intercepted. The biggest one with 20 seconds of the ball game gave Packers uh, the victory to end up going to the playoffs. So certainly I think that uh, the Bears will struggle. Even though Matt Forte has been having a heck of a year, He's been doing a great job. A lot of good balance there. Devin Hester has been a tear on special teams. The defense has been back, but I'm going to go with Philly. Philly, I think, again, I think Mike Vick will get it done. That's if he's healthy. If he's not healthy, it might be a problem. I think I'll have him lose the first game, too. But Mike Vick will certainly be the key guy to watch for. And time for the NFC divisional games. Chicago, uh, excuse me, the Philadelphia Eagles and Atlanta Falcons. Matt Ryan, <laughs> It's really funny because Mike Vick facing his old team. Can you believe that? Man, I'm not going with Mike Vick, though. I, I think uh, I think he gets – I'm going to say it's vengeance, but he certainly gets a second chance. I think he makes the most of it. Mike Vick leads him all the way to the Super Bowl, and I think Mike Vick certainly did a great – would do a great job in the NFC, Divisional, uh, the NFC Championship game. And Super Bowl pick, really hard to choose. Philadelphia Eagles facing the New England Patriots. It's certainly very interesting to pick here. But I think, as much as I don't want to say it, I'm not a big Pats fan, but Patriots right now, high team, they will end up picking up the W. I think Tom Brady is definitely a little bit better than Mike Vick. He is my MVP for the season. I think uh, uh, Mike Vick certainly been very interesting all throughout the season, but I think Tom Brady is my MVP. And I think Tom Brady gets it done. Danny Woodhead, great off to balance. Ben Green, Green Ellis has been doing a good job as well. Uh, Benjamin Watson's been doing a great job. Aaron Hernandez has been coming in and doing a great job. Offensive line's been solid. Um, the, the wide receiver core, Deion Branch, finally has some magic back and with Wes Walker as well. Defense has been doing a great job. Special teams has been there. I think this team will end up winning it all because they are the hottest team coming into this playoffs, and I think they won't get the victory. But that's enough for me. Um, <clears throat> so my pick right now, like I said, New England Patriots over the Philadelphia Eagles. I had to put a score on it. I think it has to be uh, probably 27 to 21, and I think they would pick up the victory. But make sure you continue to keep up with this. I'll be posting videos every Sunday. Uh, follow me on Twitter at PJSSportsCaster.com or PJSSportsCaster 
uh, on Twitter and just message me or give me a call if you have comments. Thanks again. Thank you for tuning in for the first edition of the vlog.